Tonight, we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Our presiding celebrant is Father Ariel, assisted by Deacon Bill. We welcome Father Giuseppe, Father Elijah, who will be con-celebrating in our celebration. In the spirit of our welcoming community, we invite you to turn to those near to you and greet one another. We begin our worship of God with hymn number 405, There is a Longing, 405. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Other brothers and sisters, it is my great joy to welcome Father Giuseppe, Father Elisha, and Brother Sean Paul of the Franciscan Friars of the Renew One. Now they facilitated and lead the Unbound Retreat that our parish hosted today. We also welcome our visitors who attended the retreat will be joining for our holy celebration this evening. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her. The Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Amen. 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, Brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that, as you received from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life, and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you will have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Today we begin the season of Advent. Advent, the time of waiting, the time of anticipating the coming of our Lord at Christmas and at the end of time. This year, Advent begins with two very positive readings, followed by a stern warning. First reading is from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming when the promise will be fulfilled. Jeremiah wrote to a people who were decimated by their enemies. The Babylonians had, had captured many of them and sent them off in chains to Babylon. The Hebrews knew that they had sinned against God and the exile was the result of their sins. But, but had God totally deserted them? No, Jeremiah says no. By their own choice, they were no longer in a righteous relationship with God, but God had not given up on them. The time was coming when Jerusalem and Judah would be safe from all terrors. A righteous shoot of David would lead them, and Jerusalem would be a place of justice, a place of union with God. In the second reading, St. Paul writes to the people of Thessalonica. These people expected the Lord to come soon. Some were nervous. Some were absolutely frantic. And Paul tells them that all they have to do is to overflow with love for one another and for all. And this will strengthen them so that they'll be blameless and holiness before God at the coming of the Lord and his holy ones. These are comforting words, particularly in light of the warnings that Jesus gives us in the gospel. He speaks about horrible signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and people dying of fright. He also says that when we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory, we should stand up straight, raise our hands, raise our head, before, because our redemption is near. My sisters and brothers, waiting for the Lord to come again is the focus of the first week of Advent. This waiting for the Lord is, is different than the usual way that we wait. It's not like the waiting we experience when we go to the doctor's office and we sit in the lobby and read old magazines and play on our phones. We wait and we wait, and we hope that when the nurse opens the door, it's gonna be for us. Also, we can get a needle stuck in our arm. And we're bored. Waiting for the Lord is not like waiting on the lines at Disney World. 
we go through this endless maze and keep walking and walking and going nowhere. But at least we know that when the wait is over and we get to the front of the line, if there is a front of the line, we're going to have fun. But waiting for the Lord is not like those lines at Orlando because when we're on those lines, we're not doing much of anything. At least we're not doing anything all that constructive. Waiting for the Lord demands that we make the best use of our time, best use of the time that we have before he comes. So how do we use our time? How do we wait for him? So much of our time is wasted. We sit in front of a screen, a computer, or a TV for hours. Now, there's nothing wrong with relaxing. There are a lot of good shows out there. But we need to accomplish more with our lives than watching TV or playing video games. When the Lord comes, we'll have to show him how we use the time that he gave us. I want to give you an example of the kind of waiting that I'm talking about by using one of the rooms in a hospital, the critical care waiting room. This is a room where family and friends wait until the doctors care for their loved ones who have suffered a devastating stroke or a serious heart attack, a horrible car accident or some other catastrophic event. Now, I hope that you've never had the occasion to be in that waiting room. But if you have, you know that it's a place that's different from any other place on Earth. The people who wait there are bound together like no other people in the world. Family members and friends can't do enough for each other. No one is proud. No one stands on ceremony or protocol. Petty disputes and hurts are nowhere to be found. Perhaps there are several patients whose family and friends are waiting in that room. These complete strangers feel bound in their shared hope for their loved ones. Class and race melt away. Each person in that room is a parent or a spouse or a child or a close friend of the suffering one first. He is white, he or she is white, black, Asian, blue collar, white collar, second. Everyone in that waiting room pulls for each other. If one family receives good news, there's hope and joy for all. If another family hears sad news, everyone in that room feels their grief. In the critical care waiting room, the world changes. Vanity and pretense vanish. The entire universe is focused on the doctor's next report. All eyes continuously glance at the door. The critical care waiting room is a place of hoping. It's a place of anticipating. It's a place of expecting. It's a place of advent. John Waller, an American Christian singer and songwriter, wrote a song called While I'm Waiting. You can listen to him on YouTube if you like. YouTube if you like. It's about the waiting that we do during the advent of our lives, waiting for the second coming of the Lord. This is what the song, this is what the, he, he wrote. I'm waiting, I'm waiting on you, Lord, and I am hopeful. I'm waiting on you, Lord, though it's painful, but patiently I will wait. I will move ahead, bold and confident, taking every step in obedience. While I'm waiting, I will serve you. While I'm waiting, I will worship you. The wait for Christmas is just a glimpse of the real waiting that we have to do when we wait for the Lord to come again. And so we're told to stay awake and wait for the Lord. And when that wait is over, what will we have to show for our lives? Will we stand before the Lord and say, I was planning to come closer to you, Lord, every day and spend every day talking to you in prayer, but I just didn't get it into my schedule. 
always say, I had always wanted to do things for others without seeking any form of payment from the world, but I was too busy doing other things. Or will we say, Lord, you know that while I waited, I tried my best to serve you and others. You know that while I waited, I talked to you every day. My sisters and brothers, if our wait is one of action, one of service, and one of prayer, then when the Lord comes again at the end of our time or at the end of the world, we will be found, as St. Paul says, blameless and holy before God at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, may our lives be lives of actively waiting for the Lord. For a few moments in silence, Think about how you intend to spend this Advent season. Please all stand and together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we enter this holy season of Advent, we prepare our hearts to receive the Messiah, with joyful hope, let us offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For an increase in religious vocations, may the Lord bless those discerning priesthood or consecrated life with generous and open hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a world that will raise up servants who protect the vulnerable, especially the aged and the unborn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all, we bear, for all who bear the burden of sickness, especially those suffering from depression, burnout, or other mental illness, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may the Holy Spirit help us increase and abound in love for one another as children of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithfully parted, especially those whose names are in our all souls envelopes, may the Lord have mercy on them and receive them into his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the attention in our parish intention prayer book and for Robert Van Volkenberg, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We'll now proceed for the prayer of blessing of the Advent priest. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness and ignorance of sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us. As we light the candles of this wreath, may their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Please be seated. As we prepare for the liturgy of the Eucharist, please join us in hymn number 39, Come Lord Jesus. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty, Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is and at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the skills we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, given thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We now offer our spiritual communion prayer for those joining us online. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Sing with us hymn number 66, Aranatha, number 66.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With three priests and a deacon up in the sanctuary, I've got to do something to earn my keep here, so I'll do the announcements. <laughs> Welcome to all of those, again, who spent the day here in a sort of pre-Advent day of recollection. Well, they're full to have you, and of course, you're always welcome back. Thank you especially to the Franciscan friars who have always been a welcome presence here from time to time, so we're very glad to have you as well. So, announcements. So, this weekend in the bulletin, you're going to see an insert, which is our parish financial report uh, for the fiscal year July 2020 to last June, June 30th of 2021. Please take it if you have any questions. I urge you to please give a call to the parish office. Uh, in your envelopes, you're going to see uh, for our Christmas flower offering provided in your packet set. Uh, it'll be used, of course, for the flower decorations for the poinsettias uh, for our Christmas season. So thank you very much for that. In anticipation of Christmas, as we spiritually prepare ourselves for the season of Advent, now that we're in the season, confessions are available not only at the normal parish times of, of 11.30 to noon and 3.30 to 4, but now a half hour before every Mass. So Saturday night will become 3.30 to 4.30, and then uh, 7.30 to 8 in the morning, 9.30 to 10 in the morning, and 11.30 to 12 noon through the season of Advent. Uh, this coming Tuesday is a family-centered retreat with the Brotherhood of Hope. They will be here uh, having talks for not just adults, but also talks geared for children. It'll be from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, and again, this coming Tuesday evening. For those who ordered our Christmas greens from the school fundraiser, the um, greens are available. They're waiting for you outside. If you go over to the Merry Garden and give your name, they can give you what you ordered. Also, next weekend is the... Uh, first Sunday of the month, and so our Knights of Columbus will have their, Chris, uh, their uh, pancake breakfast, and also uh, St. Nicholas will be there uh, for the children, so uh, make note of that next weekend. Next weekend is also the first weekend of the month. We have our monthly collection for our debt reduction. We thank you for your generosity. Um, on the table as you leave, once again, we have all of our Advent calendars and booklets and things, so please feel free to take those. Uh, the Catholic spirit is back to giving us issues of the paper. And as you leave, if you would like an issue, a uh, copy of the Catholic spirit, it's all the way on the left as you depart. You'll see a rack with them in there. In your bulletin as well, Giving Tuesday, there's information about that as well. Uh, maybe not just for you, but if you know of anybody who's in a generous heart and wants to give to a good cause, our parish or our school especially, uh, there's information about that. Please take home a copy of the bulletin. Check the parish website for information about the Christmas giving tree, the Christmas gift card script program, uh, and other parish events. To those of you up in the balcony, I know you didn't have music books. Uh, we had a little mix-up in the shipment of them. Uh, there'll be music books here next week, more not just to have up there, but also in the pews as well. The Lord be with you. With May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We praise our God with our recessional hymn, number 41, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 41. Thank you. 